Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another top 10 of movies that you can watch right now for April 2021. So let's just dive straight into it. Number 10, The Block Island Sound. Something lurks off the coast of Block Island, silently influencing the behaviour of fisherman Tom Lynch. After suffering a series of violent outbursts, he unknowingly puts his family in grave danger. The Block Island Sound is one of those low-budget indie horror movies that takes a little bit of time in getting where it's going. It has some good atmosphere throughout it. It leads up to lots of questions and mysteries of what's actually happening. It's got the wonderful inclusion of Jim Cummings, who's always a great addition to a cast. The only thing I would say is it really spells out that ending for you really hits it in the nose and kind of leaves you thinking it's, it's pretty decent. It's not a great watch, but it's a, a good, quick 90 minute thriller. Number nine, Leprechaun. When Dan O'Grady returns to the US after stealing some Irish Leprechaun's pot of gold, he thinks he can settle down and enjoy his newfound wealth. He thinks wrong. The Leprechaun followed him and Grady barely gets away with his life, having locked the little monster in the basement. Ten years later, JD and his spoiled daughter Tori move in and by accident the leprechaun is released and almost immediately the annoying creature starts to look for his gold, not displaying any respect for human life. I really like Leprechaun. It's an early 90s horror movie and it's in incredibly silly. But that doesn't detract from the fun that's been had here. You've got Warwick Davis as the leprechaun and you've got Jennifer Aniston as Tori in this one no less and it's just fun. It's got the funny death scenes, it's got funny one-liners, it's a little bit campy in moments as well, a little bit of the low-budget horror aesthetic and if that's the kind of thing that you like, Leprechaun is really great and there was a slew of sequels after that. If you enjoy it, you can go and check some of them out. Number eight, Search Party. Convinced that his buddy Nardo is making a mistake of a lifetime by marrying Tracy, Jason puts a dramatic end to their wedding. When the furious bride decides to take her Baja honeymoon solo, Nardo follows her where the lovesick groom is carjacked and left stranded, naked and penniless in a remote part of the Mexican desert. Search Party is one of those movies that you never hear anybody talking about. It's a comedy. It's a little bit of a gross out comedy. It's ridiculous situation after ridiculous situation, but because of the performances, because of the story, you're kind of engaged by it. You want to see what's going to happen. You want to see how crazy this thing can really get. And it really goes places. I would highly recommend Search Party. If you're looking for just a late night, funny comedy movie, this ticks all the boxes. Number seven, Skylines. When a virus threatens to turn the now Earth-dwelling friendly alien hybrids against humans, Captain Rose Corley must lead a team of elite mercenaries on a mission to the alien world in order to save what is left of humanity. Skylines is the third entry in the Skyline franchise. Who'd have thought about it got to that? I kind of enjoyed the second one. I kind of enjoyed this one. It's very silly. It's tropey as well. And there's lots of nods and story elements of other science fiction movies. But I like the kind of second half of this movie. I like the men in the mission. I like the turns and twists, although they're a little easy to spot coming. But it's genuinely a really good looking science fiction movie. A little campy, little fun, an easy watch. Number six, The Boy. Greta, a young American woman, takes a job as a nanny in a remote English village and discovers that the family's eight-year-old is a life-size doll that the parents care for, just like a real boy, as a way to cope with the death of their actual son 20 years ago. When she violates a list of strict rules, her worst nightmare is brought to life by a series of disturbing, inexplicable events and she comes to believe that the doll is alive. I kind of avoided the boy for the longest while. I thought I knew exactly what I was going to get and I was pleasantly surprised when I finally sat down and watched it to see that it wasn't. It offered something new, something different in the form of a horror story which does have a lot of familiar tropes but it kind of breaks them at the end. There's wonderful third act that really uh, 
repurposes everything we've seen and creates a wonderful finale for this movie. Strongly recommended. Just avoid the sequel. Number five, Under the Shadow. As the Iran-Iraq war draws to a close, a missile embeds itself in the roof of an aspiring Dr. Shadeh's apartment. And strangely, it doesn't explode. With the building already empty of tenants, the young mother will have to look after her little daughter Dorsha all alone as hair-raising indications of a sinister supernatural presence in the house chill to the bone. They say that the malevolent entities known as jinns are drawn by fear, moving from place to place until they latch on to their victims. Under the Shadow is a wonderful horror movie, really well directed, really patient and when you get to the end of the movie you are under a severe level of sustained terror. This gets to your very soul, the sheer uh, weight of it. You're terrified for this young woman and her daughter and it's just a wonderful, wonderful movie. Number four, Spencer Confidential. In Boston, the former police officer Spencer is sentenced to five years in prison after beating his dirty Captain Boylan. On the day that Spencer is released, Captain Boylan and an honest police officer that was Spencer's friend are murdered. Spencer decides to investigate and teams up with his roommate Hawk that lives in the house of their landlord and friend Henry. There's something immensely rewatchable about Mark Wahlberg films. They're just really entertaining, fun pieces of film. They never really offer much more than that. But sometimes you just want to sit down, chill out, enjoy some good rapport between the characters, enjoy the fun action set pieces, switch off the brain and just, just have a great adventure. I find that Mark Wahlberg movies do that a lot and Spencer Confidential is another one of those that I really enjoy. I love the aspect of it. I love the idea that we could get sequels. It's exciting. It's a movie that I think more people should check out. Number three, The Last Blockbuster. The manager of the last blockbuster video store struggles to keep the store open, as people reminisce about the days of the video store. The last blockbuster is a terrific documentary. Kind of. If you're inclined to love video stores in that kind of era, you probably get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Now, it doesn't go too deep into why they were so successful, why they have such a, a nostalgia about them. It more talks about Blockbuster and the people who worked there and small anecdotes, but to see um, the old signage, to see the stores and to hear people talk lovingly about it was something that I deeply uh, enjoyed and it resonated with me. Not the most informative of docs, but one that really strikes all those nostalgic chords. Number two, Crazy Stupid Love. Cal and Emily have had a perfect life together, living the American dream, until Emily asks for a divorce. Now Cal, Mr. Husband, has to navigate the single scene with a little help from his professional bachelor friend, Jacob. Now, I'm not the biggest rom-com fan. Crazy Stupid Love is one of those movies I went back and watched multiple times. It's just really easy to watch. One of those movies that just draws you in with the characters, with the humour. Some of it subtle, some of it over the top, but all of it relatable. Things you can understand and see parts of these people in your own life. I think it's uh, really fun. It's one of those ones that I've always had a strong affinity for. The four leads are wonderful and really have great chemistry together. And it's one of those movies that you just go, yeah, brings a smile to my face just thinking about it. Number one, Cool Hand Luke. Luke Jackson is a cool, gutsy prisoner in a southern chain gang who, while refusing to buckle under authority, keeps escaping and being recaptured. The prisoners admire Luke. Nevertheless, the camp staff actively work to crush Luke until he may finally break. Cool Hand Luke is one of those movies that you may never have heard of. If you haven't, you're in for a real treat. It's a wonderful movie. You get a great performance by Paul Newman. You get great performances from George Kennedy and the bulk of the other cast as this person who is an optimist. He's always looking to get the best of the situation. He wants to do uh, things just to shake up the system. He enjoys that. He doesn't like the rigours of prison life, the, the ritualistic nature of it, the routine. He wants to shake things up and that's his whole aesthetic. That's what he does. 
and he's such a wonderful character. I think it's just a marvellous movie. It's one that I go back to often and I just love and I think, I think you're going to really enjoy it. So there we have it. 10 movies that I hope you have something there that sparks a little bit of interest, something you're curious to check out. I'd love to know your thoughts on this top 10 list. Let me know in the comment box below. I'll see you next time in Man V Film.